Congrats to Clem for making it to the grand finals. Congrats to Mana for at least semi-finals, $50 in the bank, couple EPT points. Mana's a legend. Now it's time for the big one. Prediction is still open. Raynor Max Packs, semi-finals. Game one, El Cyane. I think it's gonna be fucking awesome. Winner of this best of three will play against Clément in the grand finals. Let's do it. Raynor looked good against Disc, looked fantastic against Showtime. But how will he look? against the best Protoss player on this planet. The Prince of Denmark. The man who is third in all-time victories on the Monday night. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. Bottom left side. In my eyes, the best Protoss on the planet. Some people will say, no, that's Hero, Roddy. That's fine, you're allowed to have your opinion. I think they're very close to each other. And Hero definitely got a couple of great results lately. I have just been a little more impressed by this man when he truly is on his A-game. Because then I see stuff that I've never seen before. And I generally mean that. Storm Gaming's Max Packs. Hmm. Hmm. Top right side, we are looking at the main base of the man who took out Disc with two Roach Ravager Queen All-Ins. Took out Showtime with two completely different styles. What is he going to bring against the Prince? They have battled on the ladder. Nobody saw it. Went pretty 50-50. He wants some. Max Pax wants some. What's gonna happen over here on the Monday night? Basilisk Raynor. Mm. EMP is a very good unit. Mm. I know, guys. I'm a very positive individual, so don't need too much love, don't need too many pep talks. But sometimes it does feel like, ah, you just can't fucking win. And then you ask yourself why. But then you realize that life's still pretty good, and you have a lot of free time, and you can make your own schedule. And even if some people are mean and ungrateful, so be it. Life's still pretty good, right? And then you think of all the other people that are nice, and are respectful, and do appreciate you. And we still smile when we go to bed. We smile when we look into that mirror late at night. <laughs> I'm excited for this, guys. Raynor sometimes takes the gold first on El Cyane. Last time he did it against Max Pax, it didn't really work out. He couldn't just ever get something going. Max Pax had a very cool build to deal with it. Two gate before Nexus, got a couple of adepts out early. Followed it up with Resonating Glaive Adept. This kind of made it impossible for Raynor to find that moment to truly drone up. So yes, then you have a gold, but if you're 16 workers behind, you're obviously not very happy with the gold. Mm. Open predictions. The predictions were legitimately open for 15 minutes. They just expired, but I had a 15 minute prediction for this series, so... I feel like there was all the time in the world to get your predictions in. Yeah. It's classic lately, by far the best results in 2023. I, uh, I find that kind of crazy, mate. The classic didn't even qualify for IM Katowice. But uh, if that's your opinion, sir, you're allowed to have it. I'm not gonna argue with you, especially not with a two minute delay, but... That's a pretty crazy call, my friend. Yeah. The first two adapts of Max Pax, not finding too much success yet. Kill two Zerklings, that's it. First Oracle is on the way. 33 probes, three adapts, a lot of trees, no Max. Alright, one tiny Max. Just one tiny, I haven't done it yet. Hmm. Shout out to Devnos as well for the 89 months, maybe. I appreciate it. Second Oracle on the way, Max Pax going up to three bases, three minutes and 45 seconds into the game. There's an active Cryptomer here that should be a target and will be the first target. And he's going to cancel his shade as he does not want to donate any units. Max Pax being vocal about the fact that he doesn't love PvZ as much as he loves some of the other matchups. It actually seems to be working out perfectly. Both the devs live, guys, but there are more links on the way. So far, Rainer has lost nine links and has not killed a single unit yet. Mm, should be able to get something now. The Queens might be able to get this one adapt before recall. Nope, not the case. 
The Oracle flies into the main. There are three queens there. Two queens in the mineral line. The other one on the other side of the hatch. Max Pax finds two drones. Looking for more. Won't find any more. I mean, 11 units down. Zero losses. That's got to feel pretty good, but it's not many drones. Drones is really what you look for here. Drones is what Max Pax normally always finds. Getting nine links, it's nice, but it's not going to win you the game. Five adepts, two oracles, one oracle left behind at home, I guess. Or where is where is the third one, guys? Am I blind? That's behind the main. Doesn't really show up on the minimap. Because it's underneath the aura overlord. Link's battling the adepts. A lot of the adepts are better than Drews, but they are still doing their thing. This time around, we do let the adept sh shade finish up. He's not going to get a lot with it. This one oracle from the main tried to drop a stasis trappy, but that one got denied as well. Uh, the adepts don't get all that much. They got something. They were annoying. They were distracting. Not really crazy damage. This oracle just does not show up at all on my minimap, by the way. And I think you guys can see it either. So far into the corner. And it shows a tiny blip of blue, but it doesn't show any red. Mm. Mm. Love you too, Alex. Fuck, I still forgot the uh, roses, by the way. I gotta take care of that. Sixty-eight runs for the Italian stallion as the lair is seventy percent done. The roach one has been dropped, and plus one melee is halfway done as well. Chrono Blue's getting used on the war prism on the Robo rather. Get a war prism out quickly. Plus one on the stalkers too. Max Pex really looking everywhere he can for some openings. With these oracles gets two more drones. It is safe to say he needs to work very hard for all these drones, but he's been getting a few. Now that one oracle that's been chilling in the top right side of this map for the longest time does show up once more. So we're looking at seven drones in seven minutes. It's not fantastic, but obviously with all three oracles still alive. If you're Max Pex or any Protoss, you kind of take that. Lost a couple of basic adapts, but he didn't invest in resonating glaives. So it's not like he was looking for a whole lot more. I think all of this is okay so far. Rainer is enjoying a 12 work elite. And the one oracle that was stuck for the longest time has now found its freedom. Max Pax could just uh, walk through these gold minerals here. Try to take control of the Zelnaga Watchtower. This is actually a very difficult spot for Lynx to attack a stalker because it can just kind of sit in a choke point. This is where things are going to get pretty wild, guys. Rainer is maybe looking for a run-by, but I don't think there is a run-by. Now all the Stalkers are going to make their way through the Gold Minerals, and there are some Force Fields available. One Sentry low in HP. No cancel. Ay ay ay, Rainer. Rainer does not cancel the hatch free, so that's a few more Minerals down the drain then. I think he was really supposed to lose. Mm -hmm. Tiny stays is trappy. Max Pack still here with his war prism. Could save that stalker. Will save it. Rainer doesn't even really chase. Rainer does fire up the hive. Hive halfway done. Rainer is still at least a four base dark. Max Pack's also going up to four bases, but that's still gonna take a little while. I'm not sure if this move out really found the success that it could have had. Getting a hatchery kill is pretty awesome, but that's the fifth. It's not the fourth base. In the end of the day, that's just a couple minerals that you're getting. Max Pax is definitely kind of stuck on a stalker army. Which can work out sometimes, but it can also really backfire. Especially if High finishes up, which it has done now. We can fire up Adreno Glens and Rainer is going to do that immediately. And Max Pax is incredibly stalker heavy. That awkward battle around the Zelnaga Watchtower here. I do like that defensive blink, making sure that these links can't really find what they're looking for. And obviously the stalkers are protected by all the stasis travis. That was the third stalker that has fallen. We have an Ultralisk cavern on the way as well. If Reyna can get Bailing Speed, Adreno Glance and Ultras out with Kindness Plating, 
Max Rex, his current army is not going to cut it. He's going to definitely need to either add a couple of Robos or he's got a much better army. Stasis traps are quite big. That might give Max Rex the confidence that he should do something about the rest of this army of Rainer. A couple of slow banelings, guys. Slow banelings. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Max Rex sees it. Loses six probes and a pylon or two. First Ultra on the way. Guidance fighting gets fired up. I think I, uh, I'm starting to like it for Rainer. Even though I don't think many things have truly gone Rainer's way in this game. I think that Max Rex maybe almost over-respected uh, Rainer's army at one point. And he couldn't really let him get himself surrounded on creep. But I think pushing the creep back a little bit here. Forcing a fight on the edge of creep after killing this base. When Rainer's army wasn't all that great yet. Because I think by the time they are now going to fight, Reyna's army is just going to be a lot better than it initially was. Hello, Kraf. Hmm. CVT finals, please. We've had a couple of those. Wasn't it uh, Clam Reyna last week, guys? And I had some good games, right? Especially that game on... Solaris was pretty awesome. The Roaches, Banelings and Ravagers trying to get on top of the 5th base. We have a big old Baneling boss into the natural one. How is Max Pax going to deal with this? That's what I wonder about. And we have plus 2 melee. There is a recall, but that's a late recall. So it's minus 20 probes immediately. The links with Adreno are going to get an Immortal as well. They're also in the main base. And don't forget, there is more. Reyna kills one of these Oracles with his Ravagers. Max Pax is also attacking. But it's safe to say that Reyna has found a lot more damage than Max Pax did. Like, in the end, Max Pax will be able to clean this up, but not before the entire natural. Like, all the probes of the natural are gone. The cyber core is done as well. I don't know if you ever rebuilt, right? We had a cyber core here, right? I'm not fucking crazy. Yep. Cyber core died, has not rebuilt the cyber core yet, guys. So now we can only build Archons, Immortals, and Zealots. There is a great Aspire morphing. To me, it just kind of feels that Max Pax has been stuck. For the last... Two, three, four minutes. This kind of feels like he's been stuck. He does have a very big army now because he lost so many probes. He's got 135 army supply. Bunch of storm. I think it's safe to say that he's just going to try to win the game with his army. Plus three is about to finish up. A few more immortals are on the way. We have six Archons in total, but I don't see them because I guess he left a couple of them behind to deal with these run buys. Raynor is now going to try to surround these stalkers here on the edge of creep. It's not quite going to work. Good job by Max Pax getting out of harm's way. Drops a couple nice storms, but it takes approximately 17 storms, guys, to kill an Ultra. Tickle, 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 tickle. Thank you, Harry. Stalker means nothing to you? Who is ETS Harry? <laughs> what does that message mean? Why does it not mean anything to you, mate? Thank you, though, for the 17 months. That is pretty much all we've ever done here. I know I played some poker from time to time, but... don't think many of the poker subbies are still around. I don't think we had too many to begin with. Couple of revelations landing on this Zerg army. Max Pack still standing here with his 139 army supplies. Now even bringing that backup army, guys, that was left at home to deal with these run buys. It's one of the oracles gets picked up. Couple Zalos walking on top of spines. Ooh, what a trap! I don't know what's happening over here, but three Ultras get stuck in the center of the map. I mean, that's pretty big. Rainer has now lost 2,000 resources more. I guess Ultras are just too fat, right, to go through this. This is the best of three for everybody that has just joined. Best of three always means that it's not the final. Only the final in this tournament is the best of five. Clem is already in the grand finals and he is waiting for the winner of this series. Not a Zergling run by single cannons is not going to do anything against Lynx with plus three melee and Adreno glands. Yeah, it does start to look like cleaning up this army is going to be a bit of a pickle. We are very heavy on the Ultra list. There are five Corruptors out. I think Rainer was waiting for the greatest fire. One Viper is left behind here. We need some Brute Lords, guys. Viper gets picked off. Rainer is going to more five Brute Lords. Fire up a few more Corruptors. The Lynx in the main base are really doing their thing. I don't think there is a Dark Shrine, no. The Max Rex can't warp in any GPs. Those links can probably even on power gates. But Max Rex just says, fuck it. Don't care. This is it. This is my army. Deal with it. Does not have any armor upgrades. Does not have plasma shields. And little fungal lens. 
the Blood Lords are going to be the biggest problem. Stalker's back at points with plus three, but can we get in range? It is a pretty exciting 15 minute game between two of the best players on this planet. I like it for Raynor. Raynor is rich. Raynor just overall feels like he's got a slightly better grasp on this game. To me, it kind of feels that Max Pax is working with a very slow Hell Mary. It's kind of like running, running, passing the football back and forth a couple times between the defender and the quarterback. Back to the quarterback. Who's going to throw? And where are we going to throw? <laughs> At this point, we are just running. And it almost feels like we're running back into our own end zone. As we have a couple of Banelings rolling into the middle line. Plus two Banelings no longer kill probes. Well, plus three absolutely will. I don't think that is a problem. Banelings are allowed to be good too, guys. They definitely are. Shout out to Think Spaghet for Think Spaghetti, Think Spaghet. I'm not totally sure what it is, but <laughs> Spaghet one, Spaghet one. There we go. As Archons are definitely dealing a lot of damage to these Ultras. Rainer is figuring out what he needs to spend his money on. He's sitting on 5,000 minerals. He's going to queue up eight more Ultras. Max Pax has split off a bunch of Zealots that are going to town on these roads. I mean, Rainer is definitely losing all of his important bases at this point. So you guys may wonder, Roddy, why do you think that Rainer is winning this game? If Max Pax has four bases and Rainer now only has three. That is a good question. My answer is that I still think that Rainer is getting a stronger army. And to me, it feels that Max Pax is kind of stuck on what he's currently working with. And I think he can deal with three, four, five Brute Lords. I don't see him deal with like 12 Brute Lords. And earlier, Max Pax obviously had like 140 army supply against Rainer's like 85, uh, 100. If Rainer can max the army supply of Max Pax with the upgrades that he has as well, 3-3 three, three against 3-1. I still think I like it a bit more for Rainer. But I might start bet back paddling in the near future especially if max Pax apparently has resources to drop a fleet beacon and drop another stargate are we going to cancel this hatch yes no maybe radar we'll cancel it seven brood lords one corruptor i think leaving one corruptor behind is pretty nice to just get on top of the uh, war prism nice fungal there that's going to be a couple of dead stalkers and archons for sure Immortals are doing that thing. This is where Reyna would really love to have just like 80 Zerklings or 40 Zerklings show up. In the end, the Zerklings won't show up. But perhaps they're not even needed because Ultras in these numbers are going to be good enough. We do have a couple of links counterattacking, denying the gold. It's a very scrappy game and Max Pax did just drop like 40, 50 supply. And we can just ignore the fact that Max Pax has not had a good economy for a little while. Reyna mined so much more for 10 minutes. Right now, they're both kind of broke. But that obviously favors the guy who was mining more for 10 minutes and has gathered up a bit of a bank. A few Tempests are nice, but the Raynor could still make Vipers, could still make a few more Corruptors. It's a mother ship, guys. Max Pax decides that what he needs, 19 minutes into El Sione, is the mothership. I think Paxi got this. I still think Raynor has it. Can't say that I didn't say so all along, guys. I say I said I may eventually start backpedaling, but not yet. Do you think you will be a football manager? FOTM, you mean football manager, right? That sounds fantastic, mate. That sounds absolutely fantastic. I would be very happy playing football manager all day as for a living. I just don't think anybody would watch. <laughs> Why Ultras? I guess Reyna just believes in them. I think Ultras are pretty good guys. They don't melt that quickly. There's a little zealot drop in the main. It may not be much, but obviously there is a lot of very important real estate in the main base. The Corruptors will finally take care of this War Prism. I don't think a recall could really save it anymore, so the War Prism does fall. Who is mining more now? It's kind of even. They're both pretty broke boys. Neither of them can afford those cookies. <laughs> Neither can I. I do want them. Just can't afford them. Mm. 
<laughs> Whoa, don't even get acknowledged for subscribing in this chat or there was no there was no uh, alert mate and also no I cannot always give everybody a shout out on any given moment if I'm 20 minutes into casting a PVZ I cannot always give the immediate shout outs I think it's weird as well if you would demand that as a twitch prime or a regular sub like if I stay there for 14 years and I'm always grateful and I always thank people for subbing if I don't do it immediately, that's not because all of a sudden I don't give a fuck. It's maybe just because I'm trying to do what a lot of other people are here for. I don't think that's rocket science, mate. Well, especially not if you didn't even pop the alert. How should I know? <laughs> if you don't flex the alert, I don't even get a notification. So how could I know? Focus on this game for now. As we are 21 minutes in. We are landing a Fungo. We're landing a Storm as well. A couple of the Ultras. This is obviously a decent amount of supply that Rainer is potentially throwing away. I don't want to quite call it throwing away. Because the Rainer is doing this for a reason. He's trying to set up a 1-2 point and hoping that the Corruptus, Ultras, Neuroparasite and Broodlords can be good enough to kill this uh, Nexus. Shield Battery Overcharge was active for a little while there. Definitely put a lot of HP on these Archons. Pretty insane fight. The Tempest are looking good here though. I do think I like this fight for Max Packs. Especially with all the reinforcements showing up. And the problem with this kind of an army is that it's a bit of a slow army. The slow armies don't really run home immediately. Raynor is just trying to buy time for all of his reinforcements to show up. Ten Corruptors, seven Ultras and two Infestors. One more Tempest. I mean the Tempest are just getting one shot at one at a time. I'm not sure about using that cloaking ability when there are five Overseers in the mix. But I, it is something. <laughs> Rainer did not get the gold nexus though guys in the end he got the battery he got a bunch of the important units he's still creating some chaos in the natural more links right now i don't understand by the way why max Pax would never get a dark spine in games like this it feels like there are so many moments where you can just defensively warp in a dt or two to make your life easier it's not about dealing damage with your dark templars in the other side of the map or just to deal with run by, it like make your life easier. These High Templars don't have energy to storm yet. Link's trying to get on top of the Ultras and it's kind of working. The Corruptors are here in very high numbers and is this then finally it guys. After 23 minutes it will be it. It is Raynor in the end who wins game one. It was a game where they both had a big economy and then they both had a small economy for a while. And at that point it kind of feels that every single unit matters. But Raynor never stopped with the run dice. Raynor always looked to make something happen with his links and with his ultras. And I think he did a very good job in making it difficult for Max Pax to figure out how he was to so supposed to split up his army. And in the end, that bank that Raynor accumulated for himself across those 10 minutes where he had two more bases than Max Pax, I think that's kind of what carried him to victory there. Thank you, Hardock6. You see, guys, if I'm out of a game, it's very easy. Shout out to Ruptured Balls as well. I think I always shout you out, mate, because you know you're my favorite. Mm. Brother has never thanked me in 111 months. That could be correct, but that's because you snuck into my bed in Cologne. Yeah, that's right. I feel like you still need to thank me for making sure you didn't end up sleeping on the streets, mate. What about that? How about them apples? Mm -hmm. Twitch sub notifications are problematic this week. No, it's just that if you have been a sub before and you sub, it doesn't always give you the message immediately and it does not give me the notification. So unless you press F5 and then the pop-up pops up and then you activate the pop-up, I don't even know. So to post a kind of passive aggressive message like, wow, you don't even get acknowledged for subscribing in this chat or question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. When you didn't even send the message to begin with, it's pretty fucking weird. As much as I appreciate... Uh-oh. Whoosh. Uh-oh. I don't know if the right person just snuck into this lobby, guys. There may have been a mistake. What has been a bit popular lately. Alright, maybe uh, it's fine. Alright, we'll just figure it out. Maybe it's fine. Is that people with fake accounts sneak into these lobbies so they can say mean things. Round 2. Fight! 
Top left side of Site Delta. We are looking at the main base of the man that's representing Psystorm Gaming. Was very close to getting the job done, but in the end, he fell on El Cyane. Can he turn things around here on Site Delta? It is Max Pax. Bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the man that's representing Basilisk, taking the 1-0 lead, one map away from having a, a repeat of the same grand finals as we had last week. It was Clem vs. Rainer, back then Clem won. Can we get the same finals with a different outcome? It's up to this man, Basilisk Rainer. I mean, Tuffel, what it seems is that you are very result-oriented and you don't actually look at the games. If you just want to say, Classic did better at Gamers 8 and DreamHack Masters Atlanta than Max Pax, so in my eyes he's better. Yeah, that's your opinion, right? You can have that opinion. In my eyes, that just means that he was there and Max Pax wasn't there. I just compare the games that they both play against the best players in the world in tournaments like Masters Coliseum or WTL Code S regular season or all the weeklies or the Piggy tournament. And then I look at who I think is the better play. So uh, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Brody, do you play Magic the Gathering? No, I have never played really any card games besides poker, but that's different. I do collect Pokemon cards. You guys can't see it, but I've got a shelf on my left with, I don't know, four, like 30 cards on display. I like opening them. I find that fun. I don't play. Shout out to Ihas Burrito and thank you to YYZ as well for the 29 and 10 months. With the 16. Appreciate it, lads. Much love. One gate fast expand into Stargate once more over here from Max Pax. The man who won six weeklies in a row, guys. He won three European and three American weeklies back to back to back to back to back to back. Until last week in Europe, he lost in the quarterfinals against Gang Fu Banda. I think he tried his luck in the American Grand in the American Weekly later that night, and he made it into the Grand Finals, but he lost to Hero. So, went from winning six in a row to not winning two, and now being down 0-1 in the third. Who even is this guy? So, wow, I'm surprised that he actually got the trip tumor because most of the time when the animation finishes up, of it no longer being a morphing tumor, you don't really get it. That is a mega quick lair, by the way, by Raynor. 3 minutes and 20 seconds, and that lair is on the way. Max Pax uh, saw that, and he's going to follow that first Oracle up with a Void Ray. There is a chance that Raynor just wants to play Roaches in a somewhat normal way. I feel like he's done this a few times. But I understand the Void Ray here, because if I was Max Pax, I would obviously be a tiny bit concerned about potentially being all in as well. I wonder if Roddy thanks me every time he goes to an ad break. No, because I know you close the stream and you come back later. I know you've done that, man. Time to come clean, amigo. Max Pack still a mystery. He's not that much of a mystery to me, but if you mean he's a mystery that we haven't seen his picture or he hasn't gone to an offline event, then yes, he's a mystery. If that makes him a mystery to you, sir, then he's a mystery. My brother graduated from college and Roddy didn't even give him a shout out in chat. Granted, I never said anything about it, but still though, you know what I mean? You know what, mate? I'm not, I'm not too big to apologize when I was wrong and that was wrong of me. I should have known. The census should have gone off. Please give my uh, best regards to your brother. And also just, I want everybody else to know that this won't happen anymore. From here on out, any single time, something significant happens. I'll be there and I'll give shout outs. I also want to give a happy birthday to all of those individuals out there watching right now that are celebrating their birthday on the 26th of February. And I know there's a whole bunch of you guys because what do we have? A thousand, two thousand viewers. So it should be impossible that not a single one of you guys is not celebrating their birthday today. Or well, not impossible, but very unlikely. 2,500 viewers. What are we looking at? Five, six? Seven birthday boys and girls. Happy birthday. Look at me being considerate. I hope it's an amazing night, guys. Probably celebrate it on Saturday or celebrate upcoming weekend. 
Anyway, Raynor has a Soma gone for the quickest lair and seven Hydras. I, uh... <laughs> a long time ago, guys, I made them play against each other in the big rain bouts. And they played on a map called Altitude. And I think right before they played, Vanya played, or Radata, Wayne played against Trigger. And he had the weirdest tiny little Hydra attack. And Raynor was kind of laughing about it in the chat. And then Raynor said, this build is sick, I'm gonna do it. And he actually did it, and he won with it as well. It was like a couple Hydras into Mudas. It was ridiculous. It was very fun. Like BBB number 35 or something like that a little while ago. This kind of reminds me of it a little, but... Kind of a crazy build, guys. Three minute lair into a couple of very quick Hydras into a mega quick hive. Max Rex probably wondering, what the hell is that Italian boy cooking over here? Shows your most valuable card. Honestly, mate, I don't know because I've never graded them. So I guess it really comes down to grading, right? But I've got a base set Charizard and I've got a dark Charizard from Team Rocket. I assume it's one of those two. Just depends which one is in a better state. They both look pretty to me, but I'm not an expert. I'm just casual. Shout out to uh, Marty for the 101 bits. As we have a couple of stalkers with an observer in the center of the map. But the Hydra Concave is beautiful. Hydras have plus one missile attacks and Hydra speed. Do not have grooved spines yet. It's close to finishing up. That one Void Ray, which I think was a bit of a safety Void Ray. Because I think Max Pex was worried about some weird all-ins. Mm -hmm. Shout out to those guys as well, BBB dude. Max Pax cleaning up the creep. Wondering, uh, he's gonna get surrounded by the way, guys. There's a bunch of links coming in from the top left. The links are here, Max Pax. This is not a fight you wanna take, but he also doesn't wanna recall because he probably feels he's just going to lose a few too many stalkers if he goes for that recall. Still painful though. Raynor feels like he's almost freestyling a little and having a bunch of fun. He's actually off to a pretty amazing start here. Eight minutes into side delta, kills seven stalkers, kills an oracle. I don't know what this build is by Raynor, but seems to honestly be kind of working out. I think Max Pax was very confused about what he scouted in the beginning. And yeah, made a Void Ray. That just turned out to be kind of a useless Void Ray. Like most Void Rays, to be fair. Unless you're playing 2v2 on the ladder and you give all your money to the other guy who's building Void Rays. Or 4v4, I know it's still popular there. Most of these Void Rays, they just don't do a whole lot. And then it's just money that you really wish you would have spent elsewhere. Whether it's minerals or gas, at the highest level, all these units, all the supply that you spend does really matter. And a useless void rate does slow you down. Yeah. Some of you guys are saying that this is a Hearthstone build or uh, from a Hearthstone video. I am not familiar with that one. I don't know if it's Hearthstone Zerg. I have played against Hearthstone Zerg a couple times. It always includes a very quick lair and something weird. Swarmos, Link Drop, whatever. Harstam tried to turn me into content the other day. Uh -oh. I started recording myself and I beat him. I was like, take that! When the content creator gets turned into content. <laughs> I didn't record. But I should have. The VOD is up though. No, wait, I deleted it. Damn. I won. I promise. Dark Shrine is on the way, second Robo and plus two is about to finish up. Not sure about this attack, the Lurkers obviously are going to be fantastic, but the Lings and Hydras are going to absolutely melt here. But I guess Raynor is not too concerned about it, because Raynor is more concerned about this army. And if all these Lurkers can position themselves here between the natural and the third base, that should make life an absolute hell and a nightmare for uh, Max Pax. I mean, Max Pax just cannot run into this. He's got one Observer, it is here. He cannot run into that many Lurkers. The Stalker's already better than Bruce, guys, and Max Pax knows that he simply has no answer for all these Lurkers. Rainer, with what seemed to me like a bit of a freestyle, a little bit of everything, gets the job done convincingly in game two. Rainer's looking really good today, guys, in his EVP. Almost felt to me that he was having a bit of fun there, and he still gets the job done. So Rainer advances into the Grand Finals. It's the same Grand Finals as we had last week. It was Clem against Rainer for the Grand Finals. EPT number 215. Clem won 3 to 1, right? Was, Clem, was it 3 1 or 3 0? Yeah. 3 1, Rainer won Equilibrium. 
probably going to be very similar maps. Last week, Rainer fell a tiny bit under the weather. I think today, Rainer is kind of buzzing. Seems to be having a good time. He's feeling quick. He's feeling sharp. So I'm excited for it.